Hey everyone, this is Matt Rock Solid, and this is a Battlefield Bad Company 2 video. Uh, we're playing a bit of squad deathmatch on Panama Canal. I'm playing with my friend Waza Hudson, who also plays the game regularly with me on the Xbox 360. This game was recorded in the morning uh, a couple of days ago before we went to college, and I thought I did. I think I did quite well. I think my KD was around about a five or something similar to that. And I do enjoy squad deathmatch sometimes even more than Rush and Conquest. Because I just like the um, the intensity of squad deathmatch on the smaller maps, but Russian conquest can never be beaten. Really, they're amazing game modes. Uh, Magic CM is an assault class here with the M416 or the HK16 with the ACOG sight on four times zoom, and um, the attachment I've got on it is the 40 mil shotgun because I was trying to get my gold star. I'm trying to rank up to level 35, and if anybody plays this game, you'll know how r ridiculously difficult it is to rank up. I've got to say, the Assault Kit is probably one of my favourite kits to play as, other than the Engineer. Um, looking at my stats on the Battlefield website, um, my best KD is using this kit, as I think I do seem to play a bit more laid back as I do, because when I'm in the Engineer I feel like I should be rushing, so my KD is a bit less on that, and uh, I don't really play as a Medic that often, because my friend Verbos Tiger, if he joins, he usually plays as a Medic, or as in this game, was a Hudson's playing as a Medic. So I didn't really need to be a medic as he could revive us if we died. The assault kit, the weapon, I, I, don't, I don't really find a fault in any of the weapons. They've all got their downsides and upsides really. Like this gun is extremely accurate and extremely powerful at any range. And for some reason it's just I feel like I can do well with this gun so that's what I use most. I have took a shine to the F2000 recently just for its fast fire rate and the fact I've been rushing a lot and that's an assault rifle you can really rush with because of the fast fire rate. It kind of makes it similar to an SMG. I think I've already mentioned um, this map is Panama Canal. Um, I think it is anyway, I'm pretty sure it is. I sometimes get the maps mixed up, Eureka Harbour and Panama, Panama Canal. I think this is Panama Canal. Um, what I like to do on this map is stay around this area where the sea flag is in Conquest. I'm pretty sure that's where the sea flag is. Um, on the top of this building and around the back of the warehouses where I was at the start of the game. I like to just patrol around those areas because I think that's the most high traffic area on the map and it's the most easy to keep locked down and protect from all the enemies. I like to do the same in Conquest, I like to keep the flags C and D if we spawn on that side or C and A if we spawn on the other side so we can always have that building locked down because it's quite hard to take that once it's been taken once. Um, this is probably one of the first games I've played on Battlefield for quite a while about two weeks or so because me and my friends have got a Minecraft server going so we've been playing a lot of Minecraft building a town and you know when you play Minecraft you get addicted and you have to wait until the addiction wears off before you can play any other game so <laughs> that's also what I wanted to touch on as well is the fact that the Dead Rising 2 Let's Play is back on track after the Minecraft because uh, we only recorded up to part 8 and then um, the Minecraft server was created so we haven't actually recorded and then we recorded part 9 and we're looking into doing the rest of it um, soon enough so Keep an eye out for that if you're an avid fan of the Dead Rising 2 Let's Play, which I know a couple, two or three people are. Also, one thing I wanted to talk about was Battlefield 3, because I know that's been briefly announced. I think the press release is on March the 1st, and, they have, and DICE have said in a recent post that it's going to have 64 players online on the PC, which is 32v32, which is double, well actually yeah, it's double the amount of players in a full game of Bad Company 2 on the PC at the moment. Um, it's going to feature prone and also Jets online, so that would be amazing for the PC version. It, myself, I'm going to be buying the Xbox version at first, so I can produce some videos on it, because my computer is probably good enough to run the game, but not good enough to run the game at high and record it, so I'll be bringing some Xbox videos for Battlefield 3, but if I have the money, I will be planning on buying the PC version as well, just to play it online with some of my friends who are going to get it on the PC at the same time. Just before I move on, you get to watch this epic fail here with me hip firing the wall, then missing every bullet, then getting pwned by two Wookiees. I've cut the death the spawning sequences out because they last about 10 seconds. It makes the video smaller, the file size um, a lot less when I render it, and also it makes it more entertaining to watch, so it's all win 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 situations. There's some Wookiee revenge right there. What I am going to do is buy Homefront on the Xbox 360 as well, but not on the PC because that I think the Xbox version is just, you know, I think there's, there's a bit of an advantage to buying it on the Xbox version, buying it on the PC rather than the Xbox, but I think I'm just going to have that as just an Xbox game so I can produce some videos on it because at the moment the game has the potential to be a good game. It looks basically kind of like Battlefield Bad Company 2, but 
a bit set further into the future with a f you know bigger maps, bigger pl more players, and it just looks a lot of fun. But if the company doesn't produce the game correctly, it could be extremely terrible. For example, I'm going to pick on two arcade games here. Um, Blacklight Tango Down had the potential to be a really good future first-person shooter. The spawn trapping and the clunky controls and that that just made that game terrible. The customizing you got an idea was quite good, but in the end the game failed. And recently Breach has came out and I was really looking forward to that. And I downloaded the trial and it was just, the controls weren't very good. They were really clunky and the sprinting speed was slow and there was so much lag. It was a fun game, it was better than Blacklight Tango Down by far, but it just wasn't worth the 1200 Microsoft Points asking price, which I hoped it was going to be. But I'm looking forward to Homefront, because that'll, um, Battlefield Bad Company 2, even though it's amazing, eventually it's going to get boring. I'm still actually avidly enjoying it at the moment, but I'm hope, hoping, not hoping, hoping that um, Battlefield, no not Battlefield, Homefront will be the next Bad Company 2 to hold me over until Battlefield 3 is released. So I can play that, and it's going to be a lot of fun, hopefully. They haven't actually announced that there's going to be a beta, so I'm kind of disappointed in the company for that, because they really do need to do a beta for their games. I mean, if the company looks at what happened to Modern Warfare 2 because of no beta, you know, they should really be wanting to release a beta more than not wanting to release one. One thing's worrying me about the games coming out this year is last year it was kind of a stale year for um, AAA titles. There was a game, there was this game, but that was like released, but you know, in March. But the AAA titles come out between, you know, October, November and December. And this year, Battlefield 3 is announced for 2011. Um, also, a Halo Combat Evolved remake has been announced. For along with the HD textures and a, hopefully a multiplayer component. So that'll be something I want to buy. Um, the next Call of Duty, if it's going to be made, I don't know yet. They haven't actually announced anything. There's just rumours being spread. That'll be released in November, probably, because that's their usual release date. And there was one other game that's coming out this year, which is a AAA title, but I've completely forgot it. But yes, Gears of War 3, that's it. Made by Epic Games. Um, not a bigger fan of Gears, I don't really like Gears Online. Marsh partially because I sucked, but partially because I just don't like the feel of third-person shooters. Personally, I'm looking forward to Battlefield 3, even though the Xbox version is way unsuperior to the PC version. Um, I'm looking forward to Homefront, and I'm looking forward to the Halo remake, because I've heard that Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2 were the best Halo games, so if they do it com um, implement the old-style multiplayer into Halo Combat Evolved and, you know, put some good graphics and nice textures on, that could potentially be a really, really good game. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Battlefield 3, definitely looking forward to. Battlefield Bad Company 2 is my favourite first-person shooter of the year and the year before. Bad Company 1... It was actually quite good. I did enjoy that game, but it's just not as good as Bad Company 2. They did up when they brought Bad Company 2 out. I've gone back and played Battlefield Bad Company 1, and they did up up the the controls are better, the graphics are better, the game styles better, the maps are better. You know, it's what it's strange because a sequel of a game usually ends up making it worse. But Dice seem to have done it right, so that's why I think Battlefield 3 might actually be a hit. Usually with games. Let's give Call of Duty as an example, not that I'm bashing the game because I do play it myself and I do enjoy Black Ops, but COD 4 was revolutionary and it was so much fun online. And then COD 5, that was also quite a good game. Um, it's still fun to play online. Modern Warfare 2 ruined the series. It really did, it really put the series in a bad way. Just for the fact that you know, it introduced newbie overpowered weapons and screaming 12 year olds to the series. Black Ops has kind of attempted to bring it back, but I think Modern Warfare 2 put it in such of a state that it's just, it's basically in a life-threatening situation and there's no way, you know, there's no way to fix it. So really they need to pull the plug on the life support and end the Call of Duty series and just say, make, maybe make a new first-person series, maybe make a new first-person shooter series, maybe make a new one, a new, you know, game series that isn't just called Call of Duty, because the only reason they really call it Call of Duty is to get the sales, rather than to, you know, make a good game, which I think is kind of lame. So getting past beyond a joke now with the uh, DLC support that Call of Duty's getting, I mean, yeah, the map pack's 800 Microsoft points for 3 to 5 maps is, you know, reasonable. I'd pay 800 Microsoft points for 3 to 5 maps any day, I think that's pretty cheap. But to get four maps in a zombie map for 1,200 Microsoft points, it's just getting beyond a joke now. The maps are small, they're not exactly, you know, much to play on. Whereas you can look at Battlefield support in the series. 
and uh, maps so far. All I've done is remade the maps, which I understand isn't really a brand new fresh map pack. But even remakes of the map make the map play different on different game types, so technically it's a brand new map. And they were all free, up to map pack 7, which was actually a map pack. Um, it did bring back two classics, Oasis and Harvest Day, but um, it also brought in Cold War and Heavy Metal, which are like, you know, maps built from the campaign games, like story mode, and that was free as well, so... I mean, the only thing that's come out for Battlefield which you need to pay for, really, is the Vietnam Expansion Pack, which is 1,200 Microsoft points, the same as COD DLC, but in my opinion, um, five, you know, big maps with lots of textures and support of up to four game modes, also new weapons, a new play style, and new vehicles, I mean, that's worth you know, 10, 10, 12 pounds, whereas COD, all you get is four maps, same weapon, same like play style, uh, a zombies map, which is kind of good, it's kind of cool, but you still get it for the same price as Vietnam, and in my opinion, Vietnam, even though I don't play it as much, and I do prefer the vanilla version of Bad Company 2, um, I think Vietnam was definitely worth more than the Black Ops map packs, or the Modern Warfare 2 map packs were. To counteract my massive, massive bash on Call of Duty, which must seem like I just hate the game to death after complaining this much about it, I still do play Black Ops, and I did buy the map pack. Because Call of Duty is the exact opposite to what Battlefield is. Not good and bad, but I mean, Battlefield, I want to go on it when Warren's on it, and we and him can play, you know, games of Rush that last half an hour, and squad deathmatch games that last 15 to 20 minutes like this one did. And it's a game where I need to have, you know, the attention span to actually want to play it. Whereas on card, you can jump in, go into free for all if no one's online, or go into like team deathmatch if one of your friends are online. And the matches last about four to eight minutes, ten minutes at max. So it's kind of an arcade type shooter, really. And it's fun to just pop on and have a couple of games every now and then. I don't think I should have brought the maps, in my opinion. I think I wasted my money. But for me, I just always want the DLC. But anyway. Too much ranting, and that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you saw, zip over to. Oh, just subscribe, um, comment, and like. And other stuff is coming to the channel very soon. Bad Company 2, Dead Rising 2, and maybe some COD. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.